Welcome back to Library Tricetive Channel. In today's class, we'll be learning how to make this pleated kimono or agbada. It's very simple to make and it is really elegant and beautiful. So these are the pleats here. I'll be taking you through how to cut and stitch this from beginning to the end. If this is what you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to cut this, we'll be analyzing the style first. So this style has two pleats as we can see. So the first pleat goes all the way to the M line, while the second pleat stops around here. Okay, this is just like 10 to 15 inches before the M line, but you can stop it anywhere you want. So this booboo -boo has like a round neck and also a like a v-neck in front and it has slits on both sides of the m line for easy passage and it also has a slip opening around here so we'll be drafting that on our fabric now and i'll be using a satin fabric for this also i'm not going to be adding having any joining here you can see the way that the plate goes it's close from the front all the way to the back so there is no need for us to have any joining on our shoulder for us to have something really neat so to fold this now because this is quite white i'll be explaining using this paper so the fabric I'm using is three and a half yards, so I will take this to be my yardage, and it is 60 inches in length. So to fold it, I'm going to be folding into two like this. I'm folding like this because there's not going to be any shoulder joining. And you know it's a full length fabric, and the length of this satin is just 60 inches. So there is no way these 60 inches can take the length for both front and back. So to fold this now, I'll be folding it into two by my yardage which is three and a half for me. Then after folding it into two like this, I'm going to be folding into two, two again. So these two that I have is going to be for my front and this other two is going to be for my back, which is what I have folded here on my fabric. So I have it folded into four. This two is for the front, this two is for the back and this here is the length of the fabric. So the next thing, the first thing I'm going to be doing now is to take my shoulder measurement. The shoulder I'm working with is eight, is 16 inches divided by two is going to give me eight inches, which is here. Okay. And remember that we have two pleats on that design. So for each of the pleats, I'll be using around five to six inches, depending on what you want for each pleat. So let's say I'm using five inches. The, multiply by two for the two pleats is going to give me 10 inches, which is what I'm measuring here after my shoulder measurement. So I'm measuring the 10 inches for the pleats and then the allowance for the booboo -boo for it to be free. I'm exhausting what I have here, which is also 10 inches, okay? So you don't require too much measurements for this because it's actually not fitted. The next thing I'm going to be doing is to take the measurements of my hip area so that it can assist me in guiding shaping it. So my hip, the hip I'm working with is 26 inches, which is here. And then I'm going to make that into a straight line. So let me just make that line pull down. Okay, so this is my hip measurement. So I measure 26 inches from my shoulder. And then remember the second pleat, like I said, it doesn't get to the M line. So you need to determine where you want it to stop. So it can stop on your, it can stop on your knee length. The knee length I'm working with for this is 40 inches. If you want, you can stop it on your knee length, but I don't want it to stop on my knee length. So I'll be extending my knee length by 45 inches. So I'm stopping it on 45 inches which is here and I'm also going to make that 45 inches into a straight line. That is where I want my second pleat to stop. The first pleat is going to run through all the way to the hemline. Okay, the next thing is to shape it because the hemline is shaped in like a slight curved hemline. So now to shape it, I'm going to be connecting it from my hip, okay, from my hip all the way to this place and to know the measurements that i'm going to be using here the round hip measurement that i'm working with is 44 inches divided by four is going to give me 11 inches which is here and then i'm going to be adding the allowance that i added on the shoulder for ease which is 10 inches i'm going to be adding it also here okay so after adding that now i'm going to be connecting it from my hip area like this all the way to that measurements that i have here okay i hope you understand that remember it is coming straight 
from the upper part like this all the way to the hip so from the hip area i'm going to slant my hand okay i'm going to be slanting my hand like this to go and meet my hip measurement plus 10 inches that i added where i want the second plate to stop so that measurement that i have there i'm going to be taking it down all the way to the end line sorry the fabric is shifting okay so the fabric that the measurement that i have there i'm going to be taking it down to the hip measure to the end line measurement and that is all that i need to do so i'm going to cut this house now so that i will have something smaller to work with so i've cut it now and you can see the shape that we have down there okay so the length that I used here is my actual gown length, which is 58 inches plus 2 inches allowance, which gave me 16 inches. So the next thing I'm doing now is to shape out the neckline. So for the neckline, depending on how wide you want your neckline to be, for me, I'm using a neck width of 3.5 inches for both front and back, and the neck depth of one and a half inches for the back and for the front i'm using a neck depth of three and a half inches okay so i'm going to take my curve now and then i'm going to make that into a curve so i'm going to curve the back first and then i'm going to curve the front so now i'll cut the back before cutting the front so I'm cutting the back neckline, then after cutting my back neckline, I'm going to hold it up here now. You can see the back is here and then I'm going to shape out the front neckline. Remember the front is deeper than the back neckline and this is what I have. Okay. So you can just bend it like this, open it up completely. I have pins holding it there so that's why I couldn't open it. Now I'm going to remove my pins so that I can cut facing for both front and back. Okay, so I've opened it up completely now. I'll remove my pin and then you can easily shape out your neckline. So remember there is a slit in front. So at the center front, I'm just going to be measuring like four inches downwards, and then I'm going to be opening a slit up to that mark. So here now I'm measuring the four inches, then I'll slash it open at the center front up to that four inches. So you can see what we have. So to cut my facing now, I'm just going to take a leftover fabric that I have. I'm folding it into two. This side being the fold point, so the fold points have to be against the fold points. So I'll just raise this up and put it under it. Okay. So after putting it, after putting it under it like this, I'm going to shape out the neckline that I have here. So if your fabric is shifting, you can hold it with a pin. Okay. So I'm shaping now, cutting facing for both front and back together because there is no joining on the shoulder. So after shaping out the neckline, I'm just going to raise this up now. And then I'm going to measure the same 4 inches that I measured for the front to cut my slant here. And then using my scissors, I'm going to open it up. And then I'm going to use the excess to shape my to shape my facing. Okay, so you can see what I have. Okay, so this becomes the shaping for the facing for both front and back. So now I'm going to be taking this to the machine now to sew in the facing so that we can continue with the piece so here i'm trying to open it up so that you see i'm going to sew it so you can see our main fabric right side facing the right side i'm going to place it on it like this 
and then I'm going to sew it round. So after sewing it round, I'm going to turn it in. Note that you cannot use the bias for this because of this opening that you have at the front. And if you have a, if you want a really clean finishing, you should use a facing all the time to pipe your neckline. So now I'm going to pin this round now and take it to the machine. I'm going to sew it and then I'm going to turn it in neatly. Then we'll come back to continue. So I've turned the neckline now and I'm ironing it. So you can top stitch it if you want or you can just put some hemming gum and use it to iron it. I don't really like to stop stitch. I'm just going to be ironing and hemming gum on that so that it can hold the facing together with the main fabric. So after ironing it now, we'll start forming our pleats. And to form the pleats, remember the first pleat is sitting right on the shoulder which is 8 inches. So you need to note the midpoint, the cent which is the center front and center back. I have the mark here, but if you did not mark it, you can just take it together, take your front together like this, and then you stretch it so it will be able to know where your center front is. So after noting your center front there now, I'm going to be doing this side first. I'm going to place my tape through there, and then I'll measure my shoulder measurement, which is 8 inches, which is this. Okay, I hope this is visible. So I have the 8 inches here. I remember we used 10 inches for our pleats, 10 inches allowance. That's 5 inches for the first pleat and 5 inches for the second pleat. So we are doing the first pleat now. So I'm going to be measuring 5 inches that we left for that pleat, which is this. Okay. So the pleat is going to be in between these two lines that we have here. So I'm just going to be picking this up now. And then I'm going to be pleating it like this. So these two lines will be matching each other. By the time you pleat it like this, what you have here is two and a half inches, which is your pleat. So I'm going to be taking this, this together, these five inches together now, which will form two and a half inches on foot. So I'll take it all the way to the back and all the way to the front. And then I'm going to use my iron to hold it down first before I take it to my sewing machine to sew so now you can mark this down first to guide you so you can mark it you can mark it from either the center front here you can note your center front all the way down then you mark it so that it will guide you in ironing it for you not to make mistakes so i'm going to take this to the ironing table now and iron it down so that i'll just take it to my machine and sew so I've gone ahead to iron this now. You can see that it is stain iron for me, and I just held it with a pin. So now to sew it, I'm just going to remember we folded this now. We folded the five inches, which means it's not going to be two and a half inches on foot. So from this edge here, I'm going to be measuring the two and a half inches round to guide me. If you can eyeball it, it's fine. But if you cannot, just take your tape and measure the two and a half inches round. And then you take it to your sewing machine and then follow the two and a half inches mark that you have. So this thing that I have done to this side now, I'll repeat it on the other side also, which I have done. I've also marked my eight inches for my shoulder here. I marked eight inches. And then from there, I marked five inches, which is these two lines. Then I folded it into two. Then I went ahead to iron it like this also. So from here to, I'll measure two and a half inches inward. I'll make it into a straight line. And I'll take it to my ironing table now. And then I'm going to iron it. Sorry, I'll take it to my sewing machine now. And then go to, I'm going to sew it straight. Okay, so I've gone ahead to sew this now. And you can see the two and a half inches have been sewed down. So this is the first split. So now we are moving to the second plate and if you check the picture very well you will notice that the second plate is right beside the end of the first plate which is here. So to do this now I'm going to be marking, I'm going to be starting it where this plate stops here, yeah? okay, which is here. Then from that point I'm going to be marking another 5 inches like this which I'm going to be pleating, which will sit right next to it like this. So to make it easier for me, I'm just going to flip this over. Now remember the first place we made is two and a half inches. So from my seam line here, which I can see, I'm going to measure the two and a half inches like this. Okay. So after measuring my two and a half inches, there I'm going to mark another two and a half inches. Okay. So I'm going to mark those two straight lines so that if I fold it on this two and a half inches mark, 
the two and a half inches straight line that I have here, I'm just going to sew on it straight. I hope you understand that. So let me try to mark some so that we'll get what I'm saying. So from here now, I'm going to mark the first one, which is here. I'll mark it again and I'll connect it using my straight ruler. Okay. So the first one I marked was the distance, which is where the first place stopped. So the next second marking I'm doing, remember, it's supposed to be a five inches split, which is this. And by the time we fold this over like this, it's going to be two and a half. So to make the work easier for me, I'm going to be marking two and a half inches from where the place stops, which is here, okay? So I'm going to make the two and a half inches also into a straight line. Then, to fold it to iron i'm just going to fold it on this two and a half inches mark like this and then i'm going to iron so that by the time i iron it the mark that i already have here is what i'm just going to sew on like that to have my second bit so i'll go off the camera now and then i'll mark it before we continue so my marking remember in the beginning i told us that the second bit does not reach the m line so the marking that i'll be doing i'll make sure that it stops around here I hope you can see the shape that we have here when the shape that we did around here when we were drafting this shape this shape here I'm, i'll make sure that it stops on the okay the 45 inches mark that i stopped that i curved downwards like that that is where this is going to so remember the first one is going to reach the m line but for this second one is going to stop where the 45 inches mark is so i'll go and mark that now on both the front and the back side then i'll bring it back to show us so now I'm, i've marked it down so with my pin now i'm just going to fold it like this just like i explained then I'm going to be pinning it at the center here. Okay, sorry. I'm going to fold it here. Then I'll pin it at the center. Remember, I'll be sewing it here. So I'm going to fold it here and pin it all the way down. Then I'll take it to my iron table to iron it so that I can place my measurements on it. Okay, so I folded it inside like this. And then I went ahead to iron it so you can see it's lying flat. So now I'm going to be sewing it straight like this. But remember that this pleat, this particular pleat, this second pleat doesn't get to the hand of the to the hemline of the of the dress. And I cannot just stop the sewing abruptly like this. So for you to have a nice finishing at the ending from the end point here, from that first five inches where it stopped. I'm going to be going up by around 17 inches okay so from there now I'm going to be slanting remember we measure two and a half up to here so after measuring this one and a half here here I'm, I'll reduce it to two inches I'll further reduce it to two to one and a half inches then here I'm going to reduce it to one inch then I'll reduce it to half inch I don't know if you understand what I'm saying so what I'm saying now is that I'm going to be, I'll reduce from here. Okay, I can start from here. I'll make sure that I sew it like I'm sewing a dart leg. I'm going to close my sewing where this 45 inches mark stops. So from there now, I'll sew, I'll, I'll close it. Then I'll start narrowing my, my measurement up to where it gets here. So you can use your free hand to connect it from that place in a slanting way to the 17 inches that I marked here. So that by the time I sew it in, it's going to close around here, like I'm sewing it that. It's not just going to hang here without, so that it will not have like a gap in there. So the same thing that I did here, I'm going to go to the back part also. Okay, remember we stopped this at the 45 inches where we curved it like this. So on that point, I'm going to go up by the same 17 inches that I went up with there. So I'll go up here by 17 inches and then from there I'm going to be slanting my hand towards the end, towards the end points like this so that I'm going to close the pleat there. So it means my sewing will now be from here all the way to this place then I'll continue like this 
then when I get here also on the 17 inches mark, I'll bend my hand towards here again. So the same thing I did there, I'm going to do to the other hand also. Then I'll sew it. Okay, so now I've pleated it. I've completed my two pleats. So this is the first one. This is the second one. And I can see that the first one and the second one just lap on each other like that. And then you can see that the first one goes all the way to the M line. Well, the second one just stops here yeah, so this is what i was saying you just sew it so that you can close your sewing you cannot sew it straight and stop here abruptly you need to close it like a closing your dart leg like this so now the next thing now is for me to shape to sew to close the side sort of because we are not shaping this is a free dress so to do this bow i'm going to be putting the fabric together like this against each other right side facing right side like this and remember that we have a slit at the side so you determine where you want your slit to stop so for me i'm just going to be from the m line from the m line here i'm just going to be measuring like 12 inches or 14 inches okay i'm just going to be measuring 14 inches up like this and that is where my side seam is going to stop the other one here i'm going to hem it like this to form my slit so here I'm going to be notching this on this side and the, on the other side. So I'm going to be measuring 14 inches then I'll notch it. So I know when I'm sewing I'm not going to sew up to this point. So you can see my notch. I'll do the same thing for this other side also. I'll take it together and then I'm going to measure 14 inches and notch. Okay. so i have that now the next thing i'm going to be notching is my sleeve opening remember we are going to be bringing out the hand so depending on how open how, how you want your sleeve opening to be for me i want to open the sleeve by around let me say 10 or 12 inches okay so i'll be opening it by 12 inches or even 14 inches i'll be opening my sleeve by 14 inches which is here and then i'm going to be notching that also and then i'll do the same thing on the other side so now if i want to sew this now i know my sewing will start from where this 14 inches will be and then i'll be sewing because i want to fold this in by two inches so i'll fold i'll be sewing by two inches from here then I can narrow my hand down or you can just maintain your two inches what I want to use two inches then I'll sew it from here all the way and then I'll stop where this 14 inches stop for my slit so the reason why I'm sewing this by two inches is because I want to hem the sleeve by two inches if you look at the picture closely after these two pleats here now the sleeve hemming that we have there is kind of bold so I'll be folding this in by two inches and then I'll be sewing it so which will form like it will look like it has like three pleats so I'll be folding two inches in and then I'll be pleats I'll be sewing it like or uh, sewing it down like I'm hemming it so so that I'll not be having anything packing that's why I want to shape the side also by the same two inches okay so if I sew it by two inches it will be easier for me to just fold this over and sew it i hope that makes sense so now i'll take it to the sewing machine now i'll sew it on the sides and then i'm going to be hemming my sleeve and the down part and then i'm going to hem it on the down part here also then we'll bring you back to show us okay so this is our pleated boo boo and these are the pleats that we have so this is the first one and this is the second one so i hemmed it with two inches inwards like i said and because this is, it is already a salvage so i don't need to weave it i just folded it inside and if you can see it just makes it look like it has like three pleats okay and then i went ahead to sew it on the side so i just sew it on the side starting from my 14 inches sleeve opening and then i stopped where i have my slit here on the hemline so you can see how regal and elegant this is looking and you have to make your neckline bold enough to enter your head that's why we have this slit here remember there is not going to be any zipper on this and this is it on the other side and the piece just runs through to the back also 
it's really beautiful and simple to make i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you enjoyed this let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and this is what it is looking like on the back you can see that the pleat is also pronounced on the back just the way it is on the front i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you in the next one bye